Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. This is the Stand for Fulbright Advocacy Leadership Training. Um, my name is Ann Keurig, and this is my colleague. Chase Burgess. And we work for Venable uh, here in Washington, D.C. with the Legislative and Government Affairs Group. And we're going to walk you through what to um, expect uh, for next Thursday's um, Hill Day for Fulbright. Um, as we go, if you have any questions, um, please use the, um, the chat feature that you'll see on your screen um, to enter your questions, and then we'll address those at the end. Or you can email your question to John Bader. His email is john at fulbright.org, and he'll let us know uh, the questions uh, again at the end. And if you don't have video and you're just listening on um, audio, um, email John with any questions you might have, john at fulbright.org. Right, should we get started? So let's go to About Venable. There we go. So the, on your, um, in your deck here, the slide deck, there's a, a little bit of information about our firm. Um, and um, I'll let you look through that at your leisure. But we, um, Chase and I, are with the, uh, the legislative group and um, spend you know, a fair amount of our time working with clients to head up to the Hill and doing just what you're going to be doing next Thursday, um, helping to prepare them, helping to set up meetings. And um, that's why we're pleased to be doing this with you today. All right, so throughout this webinar, we're kind of going to hit a few points here. Um, we're going to review the talking points of your ask um, and why you guys are going to be on the Hill. Um, kind of walk you through a little bit of the budgetary context of your ask. Um, update you on the appropriations process and sort of what's going on uh, politically throughout that. Uh, we'll help you be organized as a team leader uh, for your meetings on the 24th. And we'll specify your important roles uh, in following up uh, for these meetings. The first thing to note is that there are the three main talking points. Um, for, 70, for 70 years, Fulbrighters have spread understanding and respect for American culture uh, and values, built networks of friends that anchor American national security, and brought expertise and critical language skills to every state in America. Um, as we'll be talking about a little further, um, there's going to be an important element in your meetings where you're going to be sharing a personal story, but these are sort of the three anchors of what you want to convey um, during your meetings next Thursday. And so your main ask while you're on the Hill in these meetings uh, is, first of all, to thank uh, these offices for supporting the Fulbright Program. Uh, the Fulbright Program is funded for FY19 for $271.5 million, and we uh, are very grateful for that um, right now. And then the ask is to please support the program um, at $271.5 million for FY20, uh, so maintaining current appropriation levels. And then as background, the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, um, the funding for that, ECA, has been on the rise, uh, but Fulbright, Fulbright funding has not. Um, nearly $28 million more in funding uh, went to ECA for Fulbright from last year, but this was a functional wash. There was no net gain, um, as there was a transfer from the International Information Program for Pakistan, Egypt, and Afghanistan. So Fulbright funding has remained, despite the $28 million more for ECA, Fulbright funding has remained steady. Uh, so a little update on the appropriations, and, uh, appropriations process and sort of the, some of the political background. Uh, the House and Senate have passed continuing resolutions, or CRs, uh, to extend funding through November 21st at the same levels um, of FY 2019. Senate and House appropriations have passed uh, funding for the Fulbright program at $272 million, uh, but it's unclear today whether there will be a new FY 2020 funding or another CR that continues um, FY 2019 funding levels. Now, for next Thursday, October 24th, um, the, the slide says that the meeting is at 8.30. It's important to note that you will need to give yourself time to get through security that morning. Um, please plan to try to get through security at the uh, Congressional Visitor Center um, or Capitol Visitor Center by 8 o'clock because the briefing begins at 8.30 and we want everyone to be there so they don't miss anything important, including um, for you guys getting the handout of who's going to be on your team and the schedule, et cetera, for your, for your team. Um, 
you'll need that time to be familiar with your schedule and hill locations. There'll be a map and directions of where to go. Um, the team is going, your team is going to look to you for the directions and for that movement. And then you'll need to be very familiar with the leave behind content, the ask, the message, the frequently asked questions, and the state info sheets. Uh, so to organize your team kind of for these meetings, uh, we we'll want you to review um, sort of, you know, your brief introductions, kind of go over what you're going to say. Um, review what your stories are going to be um, to sort of explain to these staffers or, or members um, why the ask is important. Um, and decide what order you're going to tell your stories in, who's going to talk when, and then assign who's going to thank for the support ask them for continued funding, and then walk through sort of the uh, FAQs as needed. As the day goes on, um, it's important to remain flexible. If an office asks you to come back or meet in the hallway, do not take it personally. It's not a slight. This, is, this just often happens on the Hill. Uh, the, meet, the offices are small, and sometimes if there's unexpected activity in the office, they'll say, oh, can we talk in the hallway? Again, it's nothing personal. You just have to remain flexible. Um, if they do ask you to come back at a different time, just look at your schedule, see what would work, um, and, you know, just sort of take it as it comes. Um, between the meetings, give each other feedback in your group. Uh, you know, do people need to shorten their stories um, or maybe talk in a different order? Um, if you need to, you can always call or text Shaw's Akram at 202-550-0826. It's on, your, um, on the slide here with any problems or questions. And uh, most offices do have a cafeteria, so um, the food is good and at low cost. If you um, ask any of the security guards or Capitol Police or anyone who looks like a staffer, um, they'll, they'll be able to direct you to where the cafeteria is. All of the House buildings are connected and all of the Senate buildings are connected. So um, if you're not in the building that has the cafeteria, they can direct you where to go. So during the meetings, um, it's going to be really important to keep the meeting moving um, as time is limited, especially since some of these meetings could get cut short. Um, it's really good to be concise and clear with uh, sort of your mission and, and what's going on. Keep your remarks limited. Um, alumni stories should be central and take up most of the time. Set a po positive and bipartisan tone, and then be inclusive and make sure everyone's being heard. And then as you leave, um, thank the staffer or member for their time, um, for their time, their attention and public service. Uh, as Staff, as it notes here, staff especially rarely get that thing, so it's much appreciated. Um, ask them if they need any further information uh, and relay that need to advocacy at Fulbright.org and tell them you appreciate their support for the Fulbright program, giving them the packet as a leave behind. Um, and then make sure that you get business cards um, so that you can send up, send follow-up emails and include them in chapter event invitations. Find out the office's hashtag or Twitter accounts. Um, include a photo of business cards with your team's report. Um, and if a member or senator, um, make sure to get a group photo if possible um, and send that to advocacy at fulbright.org. Um, and if it's with a staff member, get a picture of your team in the hall with the flag and member's name and be sure to post that as well. And sometimes staffers don't have their card in the front office, so as you're leaving, when you ask for a card, if you're meeting with a staff member and they don't have one there, just get a different somebody else's card and just have them write their information on the back. Then after your meeting, um, you, as the team leader, you'll submit the meeting report form on the toolkit website. Um, this is very important in, in order to, for Fulbright to keep track of who, who met with whom. And um, you can download the toolkit on your phone, and you should do these as you go through the day. Um, so because it's too easy to forget to do it or to forget details. Um, so as you're going between meetings, please um, submit the meeting report form for each meeting. And then you can post with pictures to social media, including the hashtag Stand for Fulbright, and the member or senator's hashtag, and share with the Fulbright office. And then you'll be writing to the member or staff thanking them and CCing advocacy at Fulbright.org. Please do this within a day of the meeting. I think that's it. I think we'll open it up for questions. Okay. So let me go to, um, this is John. Happy to <coughs> uh, read some of the questions that we're getting. Um, first of all, what, what do we do if participants uh, in our team go on too long or start going off message? Uh, we're sitting in the office, they're rambling on and on, or they start talking about the president or some other issue, 
That's can a, we can we save the moment then, or what do we do? You can save the moment then, particularly if, as you mentioned, um, someone starts to talk about the president or impeachment. It's it's understandable that that's a very hot topic of the day, and people might want to talk about that. But it's inappropriate for these meetings because we need to keep the focus on Fulbright. So, um, so if that happens, there's a, you know politely cut the person off and just say you know so and so um, you know thank you so much but we need to we need to keep the focus on you know the our our, our, our the point of our meeting today on Fulbright um, which actually leads me to another point which is sometimes these meetings get very curtailed you may only have 10 minutes to you know with the staffer before they have to run to another meeting so you really need to keep things moving and um, sort of you know, in a friendly way, getting people back on track, back on message, um, that can that can be critically important. And then, as you go to the next meeting, just kind of give everyone a little reminder that um, that you know the focus of these meetings is Fulbright, and we need to keep you know on message and keep these meetings going. Yeah, and I would also say that you know you'll kind of catch a groove as the meetings go on, um, and you can kind of you know, review what went on in the past meeting and kind of figure out what works and what doesn't as you uh, continue throughout the day. A follow-up to that question is, uh, to Anne's point, if, um, if we're cut off, let's say this meeting has only gone seven minutes and we have a bunch of other things we want to talk about, and they say, I really got to go, what do we do next? If that happens, and it could happen, and again, don't take it personally, um, you hit those three points that we talked about first very quickly. Um, you mentioned the three points, the, um, the, the three major talking points, the spread understanding and respect for American culture and values, those three, and you leave the leaf behind and thank them for their time. Again, don't take it personally, smiles, thank you, and then move on. And I think you could also follow up with an email with anything that you feel like you didn't get to say in the meeting. Absolutely. So actually that's a good segue to another question, which is why is follow-up important? Uh, now I. Follow-up is in two categories. One is, why is follow-up to the Fulbright Association office important? Why are those reports important? Uh, so that's part one. And part two is, what about follow-up with the people that we met? Why is that important? Why don't you do part one and I'll do part two? <laughs> uh, so I mean, I think for part one, it, you know, it's important for Fulbright to have sort of the full um, understanding of what's gone on, it, it's a, it, you know, you build a good database, um, and you can kind of it set, sort of sets a uh, sort of a standard for um, future meetings and um, sort of what's sort of going on right now, and to know what to expect next time. Right. And then with regard to following up with the staff or the member, it's critically important because as you'll see on the hill, it's everything is at quite a frenzied pace. Usually, lots of meetings throughout the day. These congressional staffers may have, you know, four or five or six meetings throughout the day, and they're running to hearings and everything else. It's too easy for them, even with the leave behind, for them to um, forget or really absorb what, what we're trying to convey. Um, so the thank you is a great opportunity to have that, that, um, that reminder, that touch, to, um, to bring home the points again of, of the, you know, the thank you and the ask, and to, um, to bring it back to the staffer or member's mind. And it also might, they might not be thinking of it right then, but they can remember it down the line and they can go back to an email and kind of look and see what was going on should um, some of these issues come up again. Um, consistent with that, we have a, from the chat room, and many thanks to Amira Nelson, uh, who writes, in the past, members or staffers have asked about how Fulbrighters have affected their specific district. How do you recommend we address those questions if we don't have that information? Well, you will have actually in your packet that you're getting on Thursday morning, you'll have some information that's state by state. So you'll be able to tell them, for example, uh, even if no one from your group is from that member's particular state or district, you'll be able to tell them how many Fulbrighters the state or district has had, um, where they've gone. You know, there, there are some statistics that are specific to the state. So you'll be able to give them some color that, that's meaningful to them, and that's, that's really important. Yeah, and I think it's also maybe more so for Republican members um, who might have some funding concerns to sort of express, and you can sort of do this at a 30,000 foot level, why your story is important sort of to the nation or to Congress or, or why this, this program is important and not specifically just to you. And remember that uh, you're going to be scheduled with people who are from that district. 
That's the reason why we're there. So you'll want to just talk about your own story about uh, impact. Uh, so that's uh, a good footnote there. Um, another question is, what happens if they ask us uh, to come back and we have another meeting that's scheduled at that same time? This is a very practical question. Um, they say, come back at 2, and you say, well, I've I've already got a meeting at two. Uh, what what do you suggest we do? If that happens and um, there there isn't any way to reschedule for a time where you would be able to come back, leave the leave behind and then follow up with an email um, with the other points that we're trying to make that day. I think that's about the best you can do when that happens. Uh, what uh, what do we do if we're asked a tough question we don't know the answer to? Um, Maybe it's different from the district question. Maybe it's about the program or its funding trend or something about how Pompeo thinks about this or anything yeah. uh, that we just don't know what to say. Yeah. What, what do we do then? That happens. Um, don't make it up. <laughs> just say, um, if you don't know, you can say, we'll, you know, we'll get back to you with that answer. And then when, um, when you follow up with the office with an email, you can answer that specific question. It's important in your notes um, for Fulbright that you're, that you're submitting after each meeting that you make a note of that, that there was a specific question that, we, that you want to follow up on um, with the staff or a member that, um, that they asked. And so, um, but then also there's a really good, Fulbright has a really good website. Um, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but there's um, almost anything you would want to know. So, so you might be able to just, you know, look it up there and then provide the so answer. So on, on, thank you, on your leave behind, there are a series of websites referred to that have a lot of resources that you can point out to them. Uh, it's on that, uh, that main ask message um, sheet. Um, uh, and a final question, um, I actually, I might have to answer myself, which okay. is, will we receive our schedules with names and offices in advance? And made reference to the fact that we'll hand those out again on that morning. You'll get your, you'll get your folders. But in fact, on Monday, latest on Tuesday, we will send everybody, uh, advocates and team leaders, their assignments. And that will give you a chance to do the research that we spoke of in the first um, webinar so that you're familiar with who you're going to go see and what their position is and more about their biography, which can be important. Um, so Anne and Chase, do you have any final uh, pieces of advice drawing from your experience, anything that, that uh, we could close on as thoughts about uh, the work that they're going to be experiencing on Thursday? Stay positive, stay flexible, stay on message. Yeah, it, it, it'll be a fun day, um, and so we're excited to have everyone up here. Wear very comfortable shoes. It's a lot of walking <laughs> on marble floors. On that excellent note, we want to thank the two of you for this uh, very good uh, and, and concise uh, webinar. We got a lot of things covered in a short period of time, and we appreciate your help and all of those folks here at Venable who have supported this. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.